Welcome to Biology in Your Backyard, where we're trying to connect kids with nature during the COVID-19 pandemic. Whether you live in a house, townhome, condominium, or apartment, there's a ways that you can get outside and explore nature around you. I'm Dr. Mark Johnson. Hi, I'm May. Hi, I'm Oscar. I'm Regan from the Riverwood Junior Naturalist Club, but you can call me Tamarack. And today we're going to be building for the bees, where you're going to learn how you can make your property friendlier for bees by creating habitats specifically made for some of the most diverse and important bees in nature. When most of you think of bees, you probably think about this bee, the honeybee. Or maybe you think about bees like this, bumblebees. These bees are certainly important. They live in hives, they provide us food in the case of honeybees, they do a lot of pollinating, but the vast majority of the diversity and abundance of bees in nature are another group of bees that you may not have even thought about. And these bees are called the solitary bees. Most of these types of bees are really quite small, like this green swept bee. Solitary bees get their name because they don't live in hives. They lay their eggs as single individuals within twigs, logs, holes in the ground, or even within holes in bricks and rocks. Another type of solitary bee is this leaf cutter bee or this nomad bee. And there's also lots of small wasps like this mason wasp here or this sand-loving wasp, or the grass-carrying wasp, like you see here. And some of them can get a little bit larger, like this golden digger wasp. In our region of Ontario, Canada, there's about 400 species of bees, and the vast majority of those species are small, solitary species, like these cellophane bees you see buzzing around here. These bees make up the great diversity and abundance of bees in nature. And they do much of the pollinating of plants around us. And therefore, it's very important to try and protect these bees, especially in areas where there's cities, towns, and villages where their abundance and diversity can be threatened. And so today we're gonna to talk about how you can increase the diversity and abundance of these types of solitary bees that can benefit the ecosystem around you. And the other great thing about these bees is unlike honeybees and bumblebees, they don't tend to sting people. And so these are very safe for people and families. Now we've created a pretty elaborate bee habitat in our front yard. You can see that this habitat is made up of a variety of different uh, places where the bees can live. We have logs that have different size holes and we'll show you how to make those. We have even just leaves where things can live. We have bricks where we've filled some holes and the bees live. And then we've created these little habitats so we can see what's nesting. This was a design that was, that was inspired by Professor Peter Hallett at the University of Toronto. And you can see that I've created some grooves in this wood using a router and then put plexiglass over top. And what we have are cocoons from a grass carrying wasp. Here's a video of our bee hotel in the middle of summer, and you can just see how many bees are coming to it, going into the individual holes where they're laying their eggs. And there's lots of different types of bees here. You can see some that are covering up their holes and nests with leaves, That's, those are the green and red areas, others that are using mud. And then there's still others that you can't see in this image that are filling their holes with grass. But you don't have to make a bee habitat that's this elaborate. You can make a variety of different habitats for bees. And we're gonna show you a few of those that you can make quite simply to increase the diversity and abundance of bees in your own backyard. Hi everybody, welcome to our kitchen. Today we are going to demonstrate a very simple way to make a bee hotel with things that you'll have at your house. I have May here to help. 
First, we're gonna show you the materials you're gonna need. So, you're gonna need a water bottle, about the 500 ml size. You probably have these around your house. Drink the water, water your plants, whatever you wanna do. Don't waste the water though. You're gonna need a ruler, some duct tape, yarn or twine, whatever you've got around the house, scissors, um, a box cutter, but I recommend this for adult use only. I recommend this whole activity be supervised, but if you want to use a box cutter, I, I recommend the grown-ups use these. Kids can use the scissors. We've got some modeling clay. And then, do you remember from another episode, we talked about Phragmites, that invasive grass? Well, we got a whole lot of this, whole lot of bits of Phragmites that we went out and collected to help make our bee hotels. And finally, you need some garden clippers. These make trimming the Phragmites a lot easier. If you use your scissors, it'll probably work, but you might wreck your scissors, so I recommend getting these from the garage. So now May is gonna start showing you how it goes. So first she's gonna take the scissors and cut the top off the water bottle. Great, and then you can put this bit in the recycling. Now she's going to use the duct tape to put it around the edge of the water bottle because it's a little bit sharp. So we want to keep you safe while you're doing this craft. So just take it all the way down. So you're going to need about 24 centimeters of duct tape. The next step, we're going to need a handle for the bee hotel. So she's going to use about 60 centimeters, you don't have to be exact, uh, length of yarn or twine. And she's going to make some holes. And then she's going to insert the twine all the way in to the back hole. job for small hands. Then you're going to need to tie a knot. Okay, so now your bee hotel is ready to be filled. So we're going to switch spots. May is going to use the Phragmites. Now we, you notice how the grasses are just a little bit longer than the bottle. You don't want them too long sticking out. That won't be very inviting to the bees. You want them at least as tall as the bottle. Or if you make them a teeny bit taller, that's fine too. So she's going to take the Phragmites and using the clippers, she'll measure one to make sure she's got the right length. You see that one's too long. So she's going to have to trim it. And then before she gets going with the next one, she's going to take a look at the Phragmites to see is there a hole all the way through? So if she can see through to the end, can you see through the end? Yep. Okay, so what you're gonna do is take a little bit of modeling clay or mud or dirt or something to block up one end of the grass because bees will not nest in grasses that are open from one end to the other. They don't like that. So you block up one end with a little bit of clay. Great and then she's gonna put it in. And then she'll measure another one. She'll keep doing this over and over and over. <laughs> until she has the entire thing filled, like this. Now, what you're gonna notice about this is, this is almost done. You see, when I tip it over, they start sliding out. That's another thing the bees are not going to like. So let's imagine that May has filled her whole thing and she's about done, but it's still a bit loose. So she's gonna take some grass leaves and stuff them inside. Just stuff them right in there to make it nice and snug and secure so that the bees will feel nice and snug and secure. Okay. Now test it out again. Aha, so now you have your very own bee hotel. You can take this into your yard, hang it on a tree, hang it on the fence, a chest height, and then watch as the bees come and stay at your hotel. Enjoy.
Now we're going to create pretty simple uh, habitats for solitary bees simply by drilling holes into this log. So we simply took this log from our own wood pile. And so you can just take it from your wood pile or, or anywhere else you can get a nice log. And so what we're going to do is we're going to drill holes into the wood using different size drill bits. And that's all you really need to do. So the first drill bit we're gonna use is a little bit larger than one quarter of an inch. The smallest one we're going to use is about one eighth of an inch. And then we're gonna pick one that's intermediate in size. And the reason we have these different size drill bits is because of course bees and different bee species are different sizes. So big bees prefer big holes, little bees prefer, prefer little holes, and we wanna create a habitat where as many bees can benefit from this as possible. So the tools you need are relatively simple. The log, a drill, the drill bits, but of course, safety first. So you've gotta make sure you put on your, your safety glasses. And this is a great activity for kids, but it's so important that you only do this, kids, with adult supervision. All right, Oscar, so you're gonna drill straight in, up and down, pushing down uh, from above, and we're gonna start with the drill bit that's a little bit, it's our largest one, a little bit more than a, uh, one quarter of an inch. Go ahead. All right, now you can blow away your shavings. And we've got a nice hole for a bee to lay its eggs in. Now, notice that Oscar put that drill bit all the way down. And the reason he did that is because the bees do better, their eggs survive more, the deeper the hole. And so we wanted to get it as far in there as possible. So we're gonna keep drilling some more holes and of different sizes so you can see the end product. And there is a log with lots of holes of different sizes that, that bees will love and you can make this too with parental supervision. Now the question is, where do you put your new bee habitat? And Oscar's decide he wants to put it into the, the crux of a tree here. That looks perfect and it's all ready for the bees, but you can also put it on the ground or on a chair or on a, a stump like the one behind here and the bees will come and love this habitat to lay their eggs. And that's our episode, Building for the Bees. And now you're ready to make your own bee hotels to increase the diversity and abundance of solitary bees in your backyard. Tell us how your projects go by making a comment down below. And please subscribe to Biology in Your Backyard if you want to learn more about nature in your own backyard.